Roblox, the multi-billion dollar company, is suing a YouTuber for $1.6 million. Got nature of the action. Cyber defendant, okay? Defendant is a leader of a cyber mob. I wish them luck. It's just, this is a YouTuber versus an entire corporation that's worth billions. It's a first of its kind. This dramatically changes, uh, I, I guess, kind of the moderation relationship with Roblox. Out of all the Roblox users on their platform have done horrible things, I'm the very first person to be sued by Roblox. Business Insider tried to reach Roblox for comment, and they responded with, the filing speaks for itself. We have nothing further. Like your model leader, Ruben Sid, wanted to let the Roblox close for you. Ruben Sim, a YouTuber who currently sits at almost 900,000 subscribers, saw massive name recognition in recent times, although it wasn't for the most ideal of situations. In November of last year, it was reported to the public that Roblox intended to sue him for $1.6 million. Granted, it was clear for several years that the two had a long history of being enemies towards one another, which was especially clear on Ruben's old channel description, but nobody would have thought that things would escalate into a whole lawsuit. How did he get into such a predicament against an enormous corporation? To answer that, we'll have to go back to the start of his channel and how tensions between the two were shaped over the years. Our journey begins with Roblox Watch, a series that was created by Ruben Sim in which he would report on events going on within the community. Something like what commentary channels have done over the years. But what makes Ruben stand out from the others is that while he did report on things going on at Roblox, he did so while adding satirical events that never really happened. Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight. The marketing team behind this year's Halloween event have reportedly overpowered the employees and security team stationed at their Nevada holding facility. Investigators say the power to the facility was cut remotely, allowing former Roblox staff members to make their escape, killing three researchers and wounding five more. Military personnel were dispatched and captured five individuals, but two more are believed to be on the loose. Weeks after the incident, an update was posted to the Roblox blog with news regarding plans for Thanksgiving. Sponsored by Disney's The Good Dinosaur! On paper, it was a unique, harmless way of reporting information while also giving the viewers a good chuckle. However, Roblox themselves took wind of this series, and it would become a liability for Ruben. They banned every single account that I created just because it was mine. Even during the early episodes in Season 1, he managed to get the attention of the corporation, or more specifically, one individual who happened to be the head of moderation, Noble Dragon. And he would be accused of continuously banning accounts owned by Ruben, including his first account, Navy898. However, upon further research by one of Ruben's friends, Noble Dragon appeared to follow an SFW account, or in other terms, not safe for war, which was concerning because this was the head of moderation following an account not meant for kids to see on an affiliated Roblox account on Twitter. Ruben would use this information on the season 1 finale of Roblox Watch, but ultimately, that would increase tensions between Roblox and Ruben Sim. As a result of that video, mentioning him in any capacity could leave you at risk of your account being permanently terminated. Yet that wasn't how Ruben got the ban on site status. I met him in-game on an account that lasted almost two years without being banned. It was Hostile Skies. I was in-game with him, and I was about to win. He was like the last person left, and he was on the enemy team. So he typed in chat something along the lines of, Hey, Noble Dragon, if I let you win, will you unban Navy898? Or <laughs> something like that. And he didn't reply, so I shot him down, and he left the game. And a week later, I was deleted on that long-standing account. But it wasn't just the account he used on that day. Every other account that shared his IP also got terminated, even if the account did not belong to him. This moment would be considered a drastic turning point for the two sides, and as the years progressed, the mood would only get more tense.
despite the ban on site status, this would not stop Rugen Sim from producing content on the site. But in order to pull that off, he resorted to using a VPN, which hides your real IP address in exchange for a different one, effectively bypassing Noble Dragon's mass IP banning. With this in mind, he would go on to grow his channel even more, whether it would revolve around the Experience series, creating Runka 51, which was inspired by the notorious Raid Area 51 meme, and continuing to criticize the corporation on certain actions they do, whether he himself was directly involved or not. All in all, it was seen to be a stalemate that would go on for an indefinite amount of time. That was, until the Roblox Developer Conference of 2021, at which things really went south. On October 16th of last year, an account would post a tweet with the warning, Don't go to RDC Day 3 tomorrow. And attached is a picture of an empty airsoft gun. The user would later say that it was satire, and when the day came, nothing happened. Whether the intention was actually satirical or not, it's ludicrous to thinking that it's acceptable to post something like this and thinking everyone would find it funny, because Roblox certainly did it when security was increased as a direct result. Later, the corporation would accuse Ruben for allegedly being the one behind that tweet. But whether he specifically made that tweet or not is unknown, as there isn't any concrete evidence to prove one way or the other. Despite that, this was the tipping point for Roblox, and they would seek to sue Ruben shortly after the incident. There are three parts to the lawsuit that Roblox wanted to bring against Ruben. Saying false information about a Roblox employee, continuously ban evading, and allegedly making that tweet to RDC 2021. Should Roblox win the case, Ruben would have to never use the platform again legally, make any false threats or statements against the corporation, delete all of his social media accounts, forfeit any revenue he makes from YouTube and Patreon, pay actual damages of at least $150,000, followed by exemplary damages of $1.5 million, and whatever else the court deems proper. This was very serious as, once more, Roblox has never went out of their way to sue a YouTuber that actively makes content on their site. Initially, Ruben will not comment on the matter in order to make his lawyer's job as easy as possible. But after a while, Ruben would make a U-turn and upload the first part to a multi-part response against Roblox's lawsuit. But just from this first part, it highlights a very clear issue with Roblox. And I think he did a great job of breaking down at least one of the claims and improving his side and how it's misleading in the way it's presented. Ruben's video, titled Death Valley, would go over paragraph 26 of the lawsuit, more specifically actions he did outside of the Roblox platform, such as depicting a former Roblox employee naked through Photoshop. In response, Ruben would be that the employee in question was running a blog that, let's just say, wasn't kid-friendly. Not only that, but he also revealed in that same blog that the employee took a picture of himself naked in Death Valley, California. He even tagged it both nude and desert, which means anyone scrolling through Tumblr searching deserts might have accidentally stumbled across that image. After that, Ruben would also go on to accuse Roblox of not doing enough action outside of their platform against content creators and developers known to do horrible atrocities. After he was exposed as a pedophile and tweeted a screenshot showing a payment of over $15,000 from Roblox after he had been banned. I showed all of this to Roblox and gave them the contact information of the girl's own mother. And you know what I was told? I doubt Roblox would reach out directly to her. She would need to contact Roblox first. This is how little they care about you. If you have a child that gets groomed on this platform, it's up to you to do something about it, because they will not lift a finger to help you. I ended up filing a report with my local police department about this guy, but here's the problem. I have no idea who he is. 
The only people that have this guy's personal information is Roblox. They're the only ones who can identify him to law enforcement. And from what I understand, they haven't done that. Because if they had, this guy would be in jail. The group that this developer was using to host his games, along with the games themselves, were content deleted. Was it because Roblox finally acknowledged that the owner is a child predator? No, it's because SEGA, the company that owns the Sonic trademark, filed a DMCA takedown request over copyright infringement. SEGA has taken more of an initiative to get this guy off the platform than Roblox themselves. Roblox ignored all requests from their own users to have this game taken down, and it wasn't until another corporation came knocking that they finally took action. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but the group holder account was actually deleted last year after I reported it to my contact at Roblox. This account is special because on Roblox, the account that owns a group is the only account that can access funds made from the group's games. By making the group funds inaccessible, they remove the predator's main incentive for staying on the platform. The only problem is, months later, after everything quieted down, they unbanned this account. Yes, the account that was banned because its owner is a pedophile was unbanned. And when I asked why, the response was, uh -huh. The video secured over 200,000 likes, and by the end of January, he secured over 79,000 new subscribers. This was going to be an absolute bloodbath between a content creator and a multi-billion corporation. It very well could go down in the history books and severely alter the future relations of creators and platforms whichever way the ruling went. But as swift as it started, it would come to a close without the need of a trial. On January 16th, 2022, a mere two days after Death Valley was uploaded, Ruben would announce on Twitter that he and Roblox had come to an agreement. He gets to keep his social media account, but at the condition where he is not allowed to access their platform again. Whilst many users consider this a win for Ruben as he managed to survive the wrath of a corporation, it would soon be clear that he wasn't out of the woods just yet. Even though the lawsuit was settled, Ruben still suffered financially because he had to pay legal fees, such as getting a lawyer to represent him. In order to pay it off, he set up a GoFundMe, which would help him to continue to speak out on behalf of Roblox's most vulnerable users and alleviate the enormous burden this lawsuit has left on his life. As of editing this, he has fundraised just around $1,600. Of course, now that a settlement was made between the two parties, it raises an important question. Will we see the next parts of Ruben's response against Roblox? Of course, Ruben did make it clear that he intends to upload them, but will he be able to do so legally? The answer may be more complicated than you might think. For instance, the first draft of Part 2 was scrapped due to untold legal issues, and ultimately was forced to make another draft. Once that was done, he initially set the video to premiere on June 3rd. When the day came, he unexpectedly delayed to June 10th. And when that day finally came, he deleted the video before it even premiered. This is to be expected, and keep in mind, Ruben is risking his settlement with Roblox by continuing the series. Anything he says in the next two parts that might be even slightly disputable will make things even worse for him. So it's understandable that he's taking his time to ensure that his arguments are airtight. Until those parts see the day of light though, the lawsuit saga has finally concluded. It has been a wild stalemate between Ruben Sim and Roblox over the last few years, and there's a reason to believe that it's far from over. While Ruben still has comments about the corporation and their mistakes, along with the two remaining parts that are still in limbo, it seems that he's preparing to inevitably move on, as he begins slowly transitioning towards non-Roblox content on his channel. As for the corporation themselves, they seem more interested in making Roblox into a metaverse 
competing with the likes of Mark Zuckerberg's meta in the process. What happens to either of them next remains unknown, but one thing is for certain. Their showdown will go down in history as one of the most bizarre events that this community would ever witness. This has been the Roblox Backlogs, and thank you for watching.